Yo, what's up, guys? It's the MMA analyst here to give you my betting picks for UFC 141. If you can see right now, I'm clearly not home. It's the holidays. Happy, you know, New Year's coming up. Merry Christmas, all that good stuff. Um, let's get right down to it. Brock Lesnar versus Alistair Overeem. This is a do not bet. I'll tell you why. I mean, if you want to just have fun, put some money on one of these two guys and, you know, flip a coin and see if it lands heads or tails and see if you're lucky, go ahead. But uh, this comes down to who's going to be able to do what first. If Brock Lesnar gets hit first, he's going to lose his fight. If Overeem gets taken down first, he's going to lose the fight. I mean, it's just simple as that. Um, Overeem is the favorite. Uh, so, I mean, really considering Overeem's uh, problems with his cardio, it might not be a bad idea if you wanted to put some money on an underdog in, Bro in Brock Lesnar. For me, though, it's an official do not bet. I will not be touching this card. I'll just be, or I won't be touching this fight. I'll just be watching the fight and rooting for Brock Lesnar. I'm just playing. Rooting for Alistair Overeem. I hope he knocks him out. All right, anyways, next fight. Nate Diaz versus Donald Cerrone. This one here is a, a platinum pick for Donald Cerrone. Donald Cerrone, to me, he's going to be the better striker. He's going to have the better wrestling. Um, he's going to be more offensive. The only thing that Nate Diaz is going to have on him is literally uh, jiu-jitsu. And I don't see Nate Diaz being able to take him to the ground. Um, so I see this fight being on the feet. Uh, Diaz has, you know, that really, you know, that, that, that tap and slowly wear you down type of striking but um donald stroney is just all around better striker plus he'll be utilizing kicks a lot of push kicks keeping the defense uh you know um uh, keeping the distance i mean there's a possibility that he won't be throwing push kicks worried that um uh, that diaz will you know try and take him down off one of a, the push kicks grab the leg you know secure a single leg or whatnot but uh you know diaz for the most part uh, he's not very explosive. He doesn't have that, you know, reaction type where it's just all of a sudden, you know, you're on your back because he, he caught you and did his thing. So I see this fight staying on the feet, and if this fight stays on the feet, the only way, in my mind, that Donald Cerrone loses is some kind of up against the cage guillotine. And, uh, you know, Diaz can catch him in that, but I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to pick Donald Cerrone by um, decision and also most likely fight of the night. Next fight, John Fitch versus Johnny Hendricks. John Fitch all day. Um, diamond pick. Yeah, he's coming off an injury. Yeah, Johnny Hendricks is dangerous. But the thing about John Fitch is he rec he recognizes that uh, he's in a strange predicament. Uh, Dana White hates him. The UFC is not his biggest fan. No matter what he does, he can't seem to get a title shot. Um, they want to keep him away from the title. Uh, you know, they want to keep him down, all that craziness. Plus, he's just not that amazing in anything. So he literally is where he is right now because of how much he works and how much of a hard worker he is. So, yeah, he was injured, but guess what? He's going to he's gonna work just as hard as he always did, come out there and, and put on that kind of performance he always does, which is just a grindy, dirty, not dirty fighting, which is dirty to watch, just ugly, boring to most fight that will probably win him this fight and, you know, win him all fights except for when he fights guys that are just better than him, like George St. Pierre. But I think he is number two at welterweight, and I do not see Johnny Hendricks um, coming off with the win. So even though John is coming off of that layoff from injury and surgery and whatnot, I'm still going with John Fitch, diamond pick. Uh, Vladimir Matyashenko versus Alexander Gustafsson. Pretty simple here. Uh, Gustafsson, uh, he's younger, he's faster, I think he's stronger. He's pretty well-rounded, and uh, at the same time, Vladimir Medyshenko is old and getting older and slowing down and all of that stuff that happens with age. Some people, you know, they get old and you can't really tell. Some people get old <clears throat> and you're like, man, what happened to this guy? And the answer is he got old. And that's what's happened to Vladimir Medyshenko. He's still been able to do pretty good in the UFC. It's not like he's been a completely, uh, you know, a, a complete failure. I think he wants to have. He's got. Uh, I think he's four and one right now. Let me take a look here. Really won't change anything. Uh, so yeah, he's got his win against Elliot Marshall, Alexander Ferreira, um, Jason Brills, lost to John Jones. I mean, that's his recent, recent stint. He obviously was in the UFC like, you know, back in the day. But uh, I, I don't see Matyashenko coming out here and beating uh, Gustafsson. 
it is going to be a gold pick for uh, Alexander Gustafsson. I do think he wins this fight, most likely by uh, decision. Next fight, Nam Fan versus Jimmy Hedis. Uh, this is a do not bet. Simply, Nam Fan is just not that great. Uh, he's probably not even that good. He's good enough to beat um, Garcia and other really, really bad people. And Jim Hedis, how good is he? I don't really know yet. Uh, that's the problem here. I mean, he might be really, really good on the ground. He has nine fights, nine submissions. Who is he submitted? Well, you know, nobody special. I think the the, the biggest name he submitted was uh, um, Alexander. I mean, Alex Caceres, which you know, that's nothing. But maybe he's also good enough to submit um, Nam Fan. Nam Fan's not like he's a great uh, defensive wrestler. It's not like. He's got the sprawl and brawl down pad. He's not like he's an amazing striker. He's not an amazing jiu-jitsu practitioner. He's just not really that great. And in all of his fights, he's never really beat anybody. He's 17-9. and nine, And to put money on him, I think, would be a bad idea. So it's going to be a do-not-bet Nam fan, um, Jim Hedges. Uh Let's see here. Uh, Ross Pearson versus Junior Asankai. we got to go with Ross Pearson. I believe this is going to be another gold pick for Ross Pearson. I think he's basically going to be able to keep his fight on the feet and outstrike uh, Junior Sankau. Um and, and I think that's pretty much what it is. Um, another possibility for fight of the night depends on how much of a fight a Sankau can make it. But uh, most likely Junior, uh, Ross Pearson finishes this fight in the second round. TKO or knockout. I am going to go again with Ross Pearson, and it is a gold pick. Next up, Anthony Njokwani versus Danny Castillo. Look, Anthony Njokwani, you know, great on his feet, explosive, powerful, all that stuff, they say. Uh, but in this fight, I think he's going to be on his back. Uh, Danny Castillo, uh, solid wrestler, um, trains with the solid team. I think he's with, uh, you know, the dude with the bum chin. Um, what's his name? Yeah, Team Alpha Male. Trains with uh, Uriah Faber and all those other crazy, uh, powerful, fast, aggressive wrestlers. Uh, and I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to get inside really quick, put Njokwani on his back, and just uh, frustrate Njokwani and come away with the win. So again, it is going to be a pick for uh, Danny Castillo, and it is another gold pick. Next fight, Dong Hyung Kim versus Sean Pearson. It's a platinum pick for Dong Hyung Kim. Simply, uh, I mean, I don't think Pearson's uh, in his even, I don't think he's anywhere near as good as him. I don't even think they're in the same level. I mean, Dong Hung Kim should be able to come out here, use grappling effectively, take him to the ground. Uh, he might submit him, he might not, but uh, he's definitely going to win. Uh, so it is going to be a platinum pick for Dong Hyung Kim. The only reason I'm not going with a diamond pick is just because, you know, the element of you know of surprise seems like it's a little too high in this one. Dong Hyun Kim. I mean, I'm not sure what Sean Pearson would do, but um, I just won't put a diamond pick on Dong Hyun Kim in this fight. But I'm very confident in him getting the victory. Next up, Jacob Volkman versus Efrian Escudero. We know what Jacob Volkman likes to do, and I think he's going to pull it off. Takedowns, uh, control. Um, takedowns, control, takedowns, control, end of fight. And I think that's what he's going to be able to do against Efren Escudero. Um, Escudero's takedown defense is not all that great. His striking, it's okay, but nothing that I don't think uh, Jacob Boltman can get around, uh, can't get around, and uh, then basically nullify the striking and neutralize him on the ground. So it is going to be a pick for Jacob Volkman. Again, a gold pick. Matt Riddle versus Luis Ramos. Um, I think Matt Riddle is actually the favorite here. Uh, that's kind of, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I do kind of think Luis Reynolds may even get, get the victory here. This wouldn't be a bad um, underdog bet. But uh, for me, my suggestion is a do not bet. And lastly, Diego Nunez to uh, control Manny Gamburian all over the cage. Just a better, well-rounded fighter. Um, end up winning by decision. Most likely platinum pick for Diego Nunez. So there you go. And remember, I don't know how many other people got messed up by this, but this fight is on Friday, so watch it um, on Friday. Don't wake up on Saturday scratching your head, realizing you didn't put the bets in or all that other crazy stuff. So it's this Friday, December 30th. That's it. Uh, Happy New Year. I'll see you guys in 2012. And then I don't know how many months we have till the end of the year, 
we gotta watch all the MMA you can uh, before the end of the world. You know what I mean? MMA, it's important. Peace.